Hello and welcome to another video from Canadian Guns and Gear. Today I wanted to do a video for those beginners who are looking to set up an emergency preparation kit and aren't really sure where to start. I like many people wanted to do something where I have the items I need set aside in case of an emergency but I didn't really know where to start. A lot of people have uh, seen the three-day emergency food supply kits or emergency bug out bags that you can buy from the store, watch videos on how to make them. But what I wanted to make was an all-around solution that would help my family in case of an emergency, whether it be bugging in or bugging out in an evacuation situation. So where I started, I wanted a 30-day emergency kit. Now what that needs to include is 30 days, at least 30 days of food for my family. With regards to water, I want to have as much water as possible and also have a backup filtration method to clean water if I'm able to get some other than what I have stored already. I need to have something for communication, preferably multiple methods uh, as backups for each other. I need to have first aid. Now that will include both a individual first aid kit and a larger home or family first aid kit. Cooking needs some sort of a cooking device and fuel. And then other essentials such as toiletries, comfort, sanitation, etc. Some of the criteria set aside for this, it needs to be modular in design and it needs to be packed in totes. Now, I want it to be able to function as both a bug in or bug out capable system. And it needs to be waterproof and protected from the elements. And that's why I chose the totes that I'm going to show you because they are very durable and they kind of go ahead and maintain all those principles. They're very modular, meaning they're easy to carry, they can be stacked, they can be uh, transported easily, and that the totes did that very well for me. It needs to be ready for evacuation, it needs to be in a central location, it needs to be organized. It needs to be items that are rotatable, just due to the fact that most things don't have an indefinite shelf life, especially food, so it has to be easily rotatable. It needs to be items that are regularly used by my family to avoid waste, uh, specifically for the food items. And I wanted to make sure that I have it logged in a spreadsheet. Again, going back to the organization. And finally, I want it to be as cheap as possible, but still have good quality items. And the reason for that is I don't want to spend too much money, but I want to have really good quality stuff. So meeting kind of in the middle of that is the best idea. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at what I've got so far. Stay tuned. So this right here is going to constitute part of my water supply. What these are is they're two liter pop or soda bottles and I've gone ahead and once they were all done, emptied them out, cleaned them with a vinegar and water solution and then filled them up with tap water. So as you can see here, it's actually eight across by three deep on this shelf and then we've got another shelf right below it with again nine across and three deep. These are two liter bottles, each one of them, which is half a gallon if you're an American and they're just tap water. Now a big thing here is I've actually gone ahead and labeled them what they are so tap water and the date that they were filled now something like tap water can be used for both drinking but you can also use this for say flushing toilets or cleaning and stuff like that so it's not necessarily for drinking but i did put the date on it so i knew when i filled it up and that way i can try to use the oldest ones first and then refill them after a couple years so looking here i have a couple cases of water these ones are the 24 by 500 milliliter bottles. So just your typical water bottles. Now, the reason I have these is because they're easy to use. You can refill them as well. And it's pretty easy to just grab, you know, a couple water bottles if you have to go out for a bit or something along those lines. Now, that's not the most economical or the most practical uh, thing to have. And I wouldn't recommend using all your water storage in bottles like these, but it is definitely good to have some of these on hand. So in behind here, we actually have some more water bottles. Uh, some of these are store-bought, and some of these are just filled up from empty bottles. And down below, I have a big 18-liter bottle here of fresh drinking water. Again, any of this water, is it's all tap water, so it can certainly be uh, used for drinking water. But it's also usable for, say, flushing toilets or cleaning or something along those lines. So this right here is going to be what's my main food storage. These are 68 liter or 18 gallon totes. And as you can see inside of this one here, we have lots of different food packed away. 
Now, all this food that I put in here is stuff that has a decent shelf life and should even still be good past its shelf life. So you got stuff like stuffing, instant mas mashed potatoes, lots of pasta sauce. In the bottom, there's a big bag of rice. It's an 18 uh, or 8 kilo. It's about 18 pounds of rice. All kinds of canned meat and all that kind of stuff in here. Again, this is stuff that's fairly easy to use in most recipes and can cook up pretty easily. But it still has a very good uh, long shelf life. Now another thing you'll notice here is what I've included around the top is a can opener. Just in case you do have to bug out and throw all this in the back of your vehicle and go, it's good to have an extra can opener on top there ready to go. That way you don't forget it or end up having to open the can another way or look for one. Now something that I do want to mention here is I did purchase a while ago a 30-day emergency food pack, and this one's from Nutristore. I found it on sale at Costco at the time. Now, this is freeze-dried food, and I kind of have it almost as a backup to the backup. This is not something I want to rely on for use in an actual emergency, but it's more if something happens where this is all that's left, it's kind of there. Again, I don't really include this in my 30-day food storage, this is more or less just a backup in case everything goes wrong and I run out of food for the main food. This here is a second tote, and at the bottom I have another 8 kilo bag of rice. We've got some vinegar, which is really good because it can be used for both uh, cooking, it can be used for cleaning, you can use it on your food. There's all kinds of uses for that. we got uh, some flour for baking, coffee, because that's going to be important, salt, instant... Uh, buttermilk pancake mix, some peanut butter, some Himalayan salt for some taste. And I'm still adding to this, but this is a good idea of what else is in there. As you can see, the toasts work very well. You can pack them fairly well. And of course, it's going to, again, maintain waterproof and even keep things out of it that you don't want in there. Now, for now, this is the final tote that I have. And I have some other kind of stuff in this tote. This isn't a food tote. This one here has some extra socks, because you can never have enough of those. Hand sanitizer, baby wipes. This right here is my stove. It's basically a pocket rocket. I still need to add some fuel for that, so I haven't added that in there quite yet. Some N95 masks in case we run into a dusty situation. Lots of soap, dish soap, some... Peroxide, alcohol wipes, there's a tarp in the bottom, some Lysol wipes for cleaning, sanitary pads, matches, and I'm still adding some more stuff into this one. So as you can see, I've tried to hit every point on the list here for the stuff that I've put into this emergency kit for 30 days. However, I'm still working on it. So the reason why I wanted to do this video up was to give you guys an idea and hopefully spark your interest and spark your imagination. And hopefully you can put together a kit like this yourself. So my plan is to finish off this kit. And once I'm all done, to go ahead and make a full feature length video with instructions and a list of everything that's in it and all that kind of stuff. That way it can help anyone out that needs it. But for now, this is just a quick look at what I've done so far. So if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, ideas, go ahead and put it in the comments below. And thanks for watching.